Hello and welcome to this tutorial on angular motion. Before we jump in both feet into this tutorial, I strongly recommend that you watch my tutorial on radius. We're still on the subject of rotational motion. You're going to have to figure out the angular acceleration based on an initial and a final angular velocity. And we will link revolutions to radius. In baseball, a curveball is thrown when the pitcher gives it a spin, its initial angular speed was 36 radians per second. The catcher catches the ball, gloves the ball, that means he caught it 0.595 seconds later. And its angular speed was 34.2 radians. First thing you need to figure out the angular acceleration, which is alpha. Second, you need to know how many times it spun, how many revolutions it spun by the time it was caught. We know that equation, final angle of velocity equals initial angle of velocity plus acceleration times time. We need to rearrange that equation so we could have acceleration on one side Acceleration would be final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time, just like linear motion. And we have these numbers. The final velocity was 34.2 radians minus 36 radians divided by the time, which is 0.595. And the angular acceleration, always in radians per second square, was negative 3.03. .03. Of course, it had decreased due to air resistance. Now in the second part, we need to know how many revolutions. That's the same thing as asking what's theta. And theta equals initial theta plus initial velocity times time plus one half angular acceleration times time square. We know that initial theta was zero so theta would equal 0 plus 36 the initial angle of velocity times time plus 1 half times the angular acceleration which is negative 3.03 times time which is 5.595 squared. Theta equals 20.9 radians. To link it to revolutions you have 20 0.9 radians divided by 2 pi radians per revolution. Each revolution is 2 pi. The radians cancel out and we have 3.33 revolutions. The weight attached to a pulley which is turning at an acceleration of negative 1.1 radians per second squared. It's negative because it's slowing down. Its initial angular velocity is 5.4 radians per second. Its final, both its angular and linear velocity, is zero. How long would it take the pulley to stop? So what do we need to know here? Time. We know that the final angular velocity equals zero, which equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The final angular velocity is zero, equals 5.4 radians per second plus angular acceleration which is negative 2.1 times t and t would equal negative 5.4 divided by negative 2.1 equals 2.57 seconds. It takes 2.57 seconds for the objects to stop here. Now initial velocity, radius, length, time, angular velocity, 0.1 meters times 5.4 radians second, 0.54 meters per second. So this object is moving upwards 0.54 meters per second. Of course that's its initial velocity, its final velocity is zero. Its linear acceleration would be zero minus 0.54 divided by time which is 2.57. One times negative 2.1 radians per second square that equal 0.01 meters.
meters per second square, and it's negative because it's slowing down also in the linear. The second part of this problem is to figure out how many radians does that pulley turn before it stops with equal initial theta, which is zero, plus initial angle of velocity times t plus one-half angular acceleration times t squared. This would equal 5.4 times, we already know the time, 2.57 plus one-half times negative 2.1 radians per second squared times t squared, which is 2.57 squared. Let's get the calculator. 6.94 radians. Final angular displacement equals 6.94 radians. How many revolutions is in there? Now, number of revolutions, one revolution is 2 pi. 6.94 revolutions. Cross multiplication, number of revolutions, well, 6.94 divided by 2 pi. We have 6.94 divided by 2 times pi, and that equals 1.1 revolution. I hope you find this tutorial useful, and I hope to see you in future videos. Thanks for watching.